From its beginnings in rural India, the BAPS Swami Narayan Sanstha has spread throughout the world with over 3,300 centers. In North America, over 70 mandirs, including six majestic traditional stone-carved mandirs, help fulfill the vision and mission of the organization. Founded by Bhagwan Swami Narayan in the late 18th century, the organization has flourished through the leadership of a lineage of gurus. For the last 50 years, His Holiness Pramukh Swami Maharaj has traveled the world, spreading the messages of harmony, brotherhood, service, and spirituality. BAPS strives to enrich society and invigorate emotions by celebrating Hindu festivals and traditions. Children and youth develop deeper appreciation of their rich heritage and their energy is thus channeled to positive ends. BAPS aims to inspire balanced living providing an environment for emotional, social, moral, and spiritual well-being. Here, through a wide variety of programs and activities, family bonds are strengthened, thus strengthening the very fabric of society. At the root of all BAPS activities lies faith and spirituality. With the belief that inner peace is a prerequisite to external progress, BAPS provides people of all ages an environment to grow spiritually. At BAPS, spirituality reinforces the value of service. Following Pramukh Swami Maharaj's credo, in the joy of others lies our own. Service becomes a form of devotion as volunteers throughout the world donate millions of hours annually to serve God and the community. The quality of humanitarian service provided by BAPS has helped put it in consultative status with the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations. Central to all BAPS activities is the Mandir, a place of worship as well as a place of community and service. Upholding traditions thousands of years old, over 800 Mandirs throughout the world continue to inspire better living. Weekly satsang assemblies for children, youth, as well as adults help give focused messages and help cater to the deferring needs of different generations. Traveling throughout the world, over 900 learned and dedicated Swamis live and teach the values of Hinduism. At the heart of BAPS is the spiritual leader, His Holiness Pramukh Swami Maharaj, whose tireless efforts and selfless living have touched the lives of countless people throughout the world and have inspired one and all towards a noble and balanced way of life.
Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Director of Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Consulate General of India in Devon, Mr. Hari Patel, Ms. Mehul Desai, Sri Piyush Kandirwal. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our eighth episode of our program, Samapang Yatra, meaning a journey of devotion. This is an online series of stories of cultural spiritual organization. Today we have two members of Pocha Sanwasi, Sri Akshar Purushottam Swaminarayan Sanstar. We have Mr. Hari Patel. He is a trustee and the Mandir coordinator. And also we have Mr. Mayuhul Desai. He is a national coordinator for BEPS in South Africa, and also he is a youth advisor. Pocha Sanwasi Sri Akshar Purushatam Swabinarayan Sasti Sanska is a spiritual organization. It was revealed by Bhagwan Swaminarayan in the late 18th century and established in 1907 by Shastriji Maharaj. BAPS is a spiritual driven organization dedicated to improve society through individual growth by fostering the Hindu ideas of faith, unity, selflessness, service. Now allow me to welcome our guest, Sri Patalji and Mr. Mehul Desaiji. Gentlemen, Namaskar. Welcome to our episode eight of the program, Samampan Yatra, a devotion of Jenny. Thank you so much, uh, G, for giving us this opportunity uh, to share thoughts and ideas uh, and join you in Samarpan Yatra. Thank you, G. Thank you. Uh, as you may know that uh, Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, they established this program called Samapan Yatra, whereby we visit cultural and religious organization and interview them through their spiritual journey. So, Mr. Harry Patel, Namaskaraji. Namaste. My Thank you. Thank you, G. My first question to you, sir, is uh, kindly tell us about BEPS, its vision and perspectives. Thank you, Simpiwe. Uh, BAPS, as you already pronounced it very well, I must tell you, congratulate you, Bocha Sanwasi, Sri Akshara Purshottam Sanstha. Absolutely Thank perfect. You. You, you actually pronounced it very well, and okay. we appreciate that. Basically, you. you already said the history about it. It was basically, it's, uh, it was revealed by Bhagwan Swami Narayan during the yeah. time of the British Raj in India. And um, at that time, obviously, Swami Narayan Bhagwan went all over India uh, and he established himself. He was born in UP, uh, a, a small uh, village called Chapaya near Ayodhya where Bhagwan Sri Ram was born. Um, near Ayodhya, there is a small town called Chapaya. That's where he was born. At the age of 11, Bhagwan Swami Narayan left his home on a yatra. Yatra means a tour, a pilgrimage. But this was a yatra of Kalyan Yatra. It was to redeem those jivas and atmas who were actually calling for redemption. So he actually took a very uh, treacherous uh, route. He went all the way up to the Mansarovar in the north through all the treacherous routes um, through the Himalayas. And, and he came down the south of India and then went up north on the western border up to Gujarat. And that's where he settled. And he established the Swami Narayan Sampradaya, you know. That is back in around 1800. 
And basically, he then established uh, the whole uh, movement and he had lots of followers. He had met a lot of British um, officials, naming Sir John Malcolm, whom he had met physically, and obviously realizing what Bhagwan Swaminarayan was doing to the social uh, part of the, the of India, which was basically a lot of people had misunderstandings about beliefs and all that, and all sorts of things were happening in terms of in name of religion or Hinduism. And he stopped all that and he guided everybody to live a very pious and honest life, you know. So basically, this is what it is. He established it uh, in, in Gujarat uh, in around 1800. And then when he decided to leave this earth in the year 1830, he said, I will be always present on this earth through a Gunatit Guru. In other words, Gunatit the Guru, which is one of the, uh, which is also known as Akshara, Akshara Brahma, right? right? So through him, Bhagwan Swaminarayan will always be present on this earth. He will never leave this earth. And so be it, we have got our current Guru, Paramapuja Mahant Swami Maharaj, who is our current Guru, who is our sixth successor, you could say, in the lineage of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and who represents Bhagwan Swami Narayan as it is on this earth. So for us, simply way, God has not left this earth. He is as much as what we, we can say 200 years ago, 250 years ago, He is still with us through Mahan Swami Ji Maharaj. And this is how we are all blessed. You know, God is very merciful. God wouldn't say, look, I am present here physically and I'll give the, the 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 enjoyment of the bliss of his during his time and leave the others uh, around so he said no 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 i will always be present on this earth through a lineage of akshar brahma guru you know the gunatit gurus and that is why we are actually at the moment we like i said uh, guru man swami maharaj is our present sixth uh, succession of bhagwan swami maharaj and he is currently in India at the moment. And I will tell you one thing also that by his grace, we have had two visits of Pram, uh, Param Pujya Mahan Swami Maharaj in South Africa. He has blessed this soil. Uh, once he came uh, in 2017, March 2017, and we were lucky enough just before the pandemic in September uh, 2019, we had his darshan in, in South Africa. And we will, uh, I mean, Mahul Bhai will let you know more about the project that is going on in, 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 in uh, North Riding uh, in, in Johannesburg. So basically that is one of the, uh, the, the history behind this. And the vision is basically, we believe that every soul, every Atma needs to be redempted. We are covered in the blanket of Maya, the illusion. And hence what we need to do is to come out of that illusion and then get redempted. And the only way we can do is to follow certain tenets, certain righteousness. We got to follow that and believe in that. And what we have got, we believe that whoever is in Maya cannot remove you from Maya. It's very simple. Simply way, just to give you an example, if somebody is drowning in the lake, and there's another person with him, he can't save him because both are in the lake, they are both drowning. Right. But if there was somebody on the shores of the lake and he's got a, a rope and he can throw this rope to you and he can save you. And so for right. us in this example, Man Swamiji currently is our person who is on the shores and we are in the lake, we are drowning, we are trying to swim this uh, the, the, the ocean of illusion called the Maya. And so Mahan Swamiji is there, said, here is the rope, I'll, I'll save you. So that, that's an example that I'm giving you that basically the vision is that every soul, every being on this earth or in this universe will have that mukti, that redemption, or another word is called atyantik mukti, is ultimate salvation. 
You know, that is what our goal is. Otherwise, as we believe, the 8.4 million lives are waiting for you to take birth on. It's a cycle, you know. So in order to escape that cycle, you need a God-realized guru, an Akshar Brahm guru, the other word is, you know, a Sat Purush, that's the other word they've used in this, uh, our text in, the, in our Holy Scriptures. You know, these are the, the, the gurus who have reached the Brahmi Siddhi as mentioned by Sri Krishna Bhagwan in the Gita. So those are the gurus who can actually pull you out of that ocean of Maya. And that is our vision. BAPS's vision is that everybody and everybody is entitled to this authentic mukti and those who join and follow will be redempted in this very birth. Not taking another birth, Miss Impiwe. <laughs> I don't want to come back on this earth as another, you know, uh, because as you can see what's happening on this earth, you know, so I'd rather be redempted this very life. For that, I have to obviously sacrifice my worldly enjoyments, you know, because God, uh, God has given you these uh, uh, things in front of you, which you have to basically bypass and focus on him and hold him only. And we got Guru Man Swamiji Maharaj is a role model because we need a role model, you know, in this world. So he is our role model. He will make sure you follow him. You do as he tells you, as he tells you, and you will be surely granted redemption on this very birth. That's what I have to cover on this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hari Ji. Your answer were very uh, was very informative, and indeed, the works of Bhagwan Swami Narayanji it will it will be with us forever. Danya Bhaji. Our second question is, what type of activities are you conducting regularly? Uh, Simpi Veji, that is uh, the BAPS organization for, is in South Africa, uh, currently has uh, seven mandirs, uh, temples, and uh, about 20 other centers all over the country. Um, and the main uh, function of uh, the temples, it is a uh, the, 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 the hub of uh, numerous spiritual and cultural activities. Um, just to name a few of these activities, um, number one, uh, right now it's Corona, but uh, uh, not uh, considering Corona in the normal times, the weekly assemblies uh, in which uh, all the devout gather once a week at uh, separate forums for children, for teenagers, for youth, and then for the adults. And then um, engage in spiritual prayer and spiritual talks, guidance, um, more about youth development, um, keeping the teenagers on the right path, uh, guiding them in academics, guiding them in their careers, uh, you know, keeping the youth off the road, off the streets, and um, energy, using the energy in a constructive service to society. So many of these activities are ongoing, even during these uh, pandemic times. Uh, these youth uh, function as volunteers of the BAPS, uh, the charity wing of, of BAPS, uh, in which uh, so many relief activities, so many service seva activities are uh, underway. Just to name a few, uh, you know, when the third wave hit India and uh, there was a, just a sudden uh, demand for oximeters, uh, oxygen concentrators. And at that time, uh, South Africa's youth, uh, the BPS charities of South Africa, um, uh, gathered their strength even during lockdown, lockdown times. And we donated 100 oxygen concentrators to India. Uh, currently, when the pandemic has reached its height in South Africa, um, even today as we speak, 
uh, volunteers are at uh, the hospital um, donating uh, blankets uh, in, in Johannesburg. The winter is quite severe right now. And uh, the hospitals are running out of things like water, which is a basic uh, necessity, a very important need. Um, they're running out of uh, blankets, they're running out of beds. And in this type of uh, situation, uh, the youth of BAPS charities are lending a hand wherever they can, however much we can. And uh, of course, the whole community around each of these uh, temples and centers are also lending their strength, you know, and contributing. So in that way, uh, the regular meetings of uh, BAPS uh, really energize and synergize um, the youth energy. Other activities, if I may talk about, uh, we also have the Shayona uh, concept. Shayona is the uh, uh, pure vegetarian restaurant um, based on Hindu and uh, sattvic uh, um, uh, cooking methods, uh, something which uh, I think every viewer uh, has an experience of Shayona. And uh, in our various uh, uh, centers around the country, uh, Shayona is a very uh, active uh, uh, one of our projects uh, ongoing. And also Shayona funds uh, the numerous uh, service activities of the organization. Uh, one great uh, project, our flagship project, uh, which we'll talk about later, but uh, the um, a traditional a mandir, which is uh, being constructed in Johannesburg uh, in North Riding. And that is uh, going to be the pride of uh, all Hindus uh, in this country, something which we can show to the rest of the country and say, this is our identity, uh, this is our pride, this is our culture. So I think the main activity of PAPS in the community is to uh, bring out that pride for our culture, for our traditions and values, and to ensure that the future generations, um, they not, not only know their culture, but they celebrate it uh, through their personal lives. Um, and that is uh, the youth, uh, um, concentration on the youth uh, by the organization. Uh, these are in uh, just in high level, uh, all the different activities running all over the country. Tanya Vat Meruji, truly uh, I am touched because, you know, in whatever we are doing, we have to have our youth next to us so that they will learn from us, you know. So mm -hmm. I'm very uh, touched by what you're saying, and also about the activities that you are running at, 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 at the BAPS. You know, it shows that uh, this institution is really caring and sharing. Tanya Baji, thank you. Hariji, sir, can you add some few points on the adult perspective about the response of all the activities? Yes, uh, CPWA, the as we said, um, BAPS is known for uh, doing satsang or getting involved, everybody involved at different age groups, from right. as as young as three years old to you could say hundred years old. We have have lived beyond that, and right. basically, whatever a three year old or twenty year old likes to do is not the same for the adults. So we got a different right. forums for different things, including the seva or the the right. volunteer work that we offer. So for the adults or the elderly, there are a lot of seva that goes on. Like as Mehul Bai said, um, for example, our project called Shayona. In Shayona, right. uh, basically, uh, it's all volunteers who get together to produce all the lovely. Mithais, I call it, or sweetmeats and savouries and all that. It's all volunteers who get together 
produce everything with a lot of love in it and made to the best of the professional way and, and served to the community. So in that whole project, everybody and everybody are involved. To start with, like purchasing of the goods, adults come in. And then making in the goods, also some of the ad adults, ladies and gents are involved, elderly. And then once the product are finished, the youth comes in and process, this, process it then. Then comes the packing of the goods, where again, youths and old are, 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 are working together. And lastly, obviously, little children are there also to help out in transporting uh, the goods from one place to other within the temple complex and all that. So everybody mm -hmm. and everybody gets involved in this project. And you know, one thing, uh, in this whole exercise, the idea is, is that we've read all the scriptures about to be good and not to be angry, not to be jealous, not to be all sorts of things. But when do we right. practice this? We all hear the discourses, we read about it, you know, but where do you practice? The only way to practice is, is when you come and do things together. When, mm. you know, I might say, no, it must happen this way. Another person will come say, no, it's this way. A little child will say, no, but I don't like this. So mm. look at this right. now. In the same pot, everybody is throwing their views and they are all testing your, 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 your ego, for example, you know. So in this kind of a, a volunteer uh, uh, a work that we do, we do it together. So at the same time, we learn it, how to tolerate each other. Because our, all our gurus, as I mentioned, all the six gurus, they base okay. their motto on, on tolerance of each other. Tolerance at any level. Our gurus have faced uh, uh, lots of, uh, what do you call, insults abuses, physical and mental, but they maintain that, that equipoiseness, the, the sthita pragnata, as we call it in, in Bhagavad Gita, you know? Right. And they, they behave like this, they are our role models, so they ask us to behave like that. So in any circumstances, when we are doing all these kind of projects, we all come together, and then all our baser instincts come out as well at that point. So now we must right. remember, oh, I read in the scriptures, our guru says, I must not get angry. I must bow down to the smallest of the boy in the, in the temple. You know, I must respect my elders. I must not do this. I must control my tongue. You know, I must control my, my anger. So this is a practical way where we learn from whatever we, uh, application basically, from what we learned in the scriptures, now it's time to apply. So everybody gets involved in this. It's a one big family. You know, BAPS is a one big family of all ages, all colors and creeds and castes. And we, 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 we really enjoy this. And this is the only way for redemption, to learn to tolerate each other, kill the ego, kill the anger, kill the jealousy. Once you do that, you'll become like our guru and you'll become pure. And then God will accept you with two hands and say, come, you know, you're pure now. But who can do that? Only through Guru we can achieve that, you know, because they are the role models. Our next question is what type of participation and response that you are getting in these activities that you mentioned? Milva? Uh, yes, so. Uh... Um, actually, uh, in all these activities, as I mentioned, the different centers, the different uh, temples all around the country, uh, there is always a dedicated group of devotees um, who form the strength of each center, including youths, including the women, uh, they form the backbone of each center. All the activities are coordinated in such a way that we just uh, send this uh, instruction or message uh, to the respective centers and the message gets carried down towards each and every member 
of that uh, center. Uh, together with that, you know, the local communities around all our centers, uh, be it in Johannesburg, be it in Durban, be it uh, Cape Town, uh, or even uh, in the Limpopo or in Pretoria for that matter, the entire Hindu community around the Mandirs, uh, they lend their support uh, to each of these uh, activities. And in that way, you know, one one great uh, pride uh, uh, which we uh, should be having is that the temple uh, brings out, uh, you know, your your sense of uh, uh, what we say, uh, mamatwa, or the feeling of mindness. This mandir is mine. This uh, this religion I belong to it. Uh, the Hinduness. You know, and that is then spread throughout that community. And so this kind of we are we are happy to say by Pramukh Swami Maharaj and Mahan Swami Maharaj's grace uh, that the youth are lending their hand. Uh, the teenagers are showing that enthusiasm. The children are attending regularly. Uh, they are learning the vernacular language, uh, Gujarati. In fact, right now there is a uh, there is a trend to learn Sanskrit, to learn the shlokas, to buy how buy heart our scriptural uh, texts, and this is being done by young children, you know, school going children, and so we feel uh, that is uh, the great service of uh, the BAPS in our Hindu society. Mm. Thank you very much, Jay. Thank you. So when I was reading the, when I was reading the write up about the institution, you know, there was this line that it says one of the vision was to improve society through individual growth. You know, whatever yes. Hariji has said now, it is about all individual growth. You know, so mm -hmm. there is a sense yes. in me that in BAPS members, all of them are having a fair share in contributing the vision of the founding member of BAPS. Yes. Now I am sure, I am 100% sure that all mem members of BAPS are hands-on. There is no youth, there is no adult, all are there to support mm -hmm. the vision of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Thank you very much, sir, for that answer. Now, our next question is, what are the challenges that you are facing for the expansion of this work? Well, to keep it short, look, South Africa is a multicultural, multinational society, you know, where everybody and everybody, again, this is South Africa is one big family. Yes, BAPS is, so is South Africa. It's a rainbow nation. You know, right. and everybody and everybody are saying uh, are living in this country, and we are making our life uh, uh, to progress in our lives in in this country. I think, look, it's a difficult question. What challenges we are facing? But there's many. You know, it's all individuals. It's all in the mind as well. But I, I think one thing that comes into my mind is that uh, I think it's a socio-economic uh, uh, thing that we we basically feel. Is, is is actually bringing us a big challenge in this country and uh, in the growth of uh, or any, I think even the churches or the mosques or the temples, I think we are facing that because a lot of younger people are being attracted to better jobs, better careers in other countries. And so I think a lot of uh, uh, youths and all this are, are actually uh, trying to, which is an obvious reason that look, they have to also survive. And if the prospects are not that good here, and these right. days, uh, world has become like in your hand, you know, it's become so small with the advance of the technology. So you find that a lot of youths and a lot of youngsters and the, all the brainy chaps are, are trying to leave South Africa, um, you know, to so-called the greener pastures, you know, and uh, basically, 
that I think is a, is a big challenge in my mind. Maybe Melbourne can add something else. Uh, that's that's what I think maybe is causing a, a bit of a problem in terms of uh, growth. You know about uh, what uh, Harnish Bhai is saying. Uh, oh. We always uh, present this uh, fear. I would say because we do have all have that inherent fear. And we express that in front of our Guru, uh, Puja Mahan Swami Maharaj, uh, that, you know, please bless our country because there is uh, so much uh, richness in our natural resources, in our people, in our multicultural society. Uh, but there is just these, uh, uh, these stumbling blocks, these hurdles of, uh, you know, unemployment, crime, um, the rent uh, fluctuating. So when we express this to Puja Swamiji, he always uh, reassures us uh, that the future is bright. And uh, <laughs> his vision is beyond, beyond ours, beyond mine. And so, you know, it's faith which is carrying this organization forward at this point in time. Uh, pure faith in the words of an enlightened soul who can see in the past and in the future. And he is uh, assuring us uh, that the future is bright. And therefore, even though we see these stumbling blocks, but the organization uh, is moving forward in leaps and bounds, uh, not, uh, uh, not uh, holding back, you know, um, and uh, moving forward in all the activities. Um, with that faith. And so I think these challenging times are also a test of our faith uh, and our conviction. And so that's how we are currently uh, moving forward in these trying times. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our next question is, what are the prospects of BAPS activities in South Africa? Uh, Mehul Bhai, I think, is in a better position. He is the national coordinator of South Africa. I think he'll be in a better position to answer. Sorry. Uh, that is uh, typical of our elders who gives the youth a uh, first chance. <laughs> Although uh, Harish, Bhai, Harish Bhai handles the uh, part of, he's part of the group handling the entire activities. Uh, but thank you for that. Um, BAPS is currently uh, building in North Riding uh, on 17 acres of land, uh, the Sri Swaminarayan Mandir and Cultural Complex, which will be, as I mentioned earlier, the pride of Hindu uh, culture in South Africa. In fact, I would say in the entire Africa, they will be... Uh, this will be a unique temple, a unique mandir, uh, built according to the uh, Shilpa Shastras, which are our traditional uh, Hindu texts on building of spiritual uh, places. Um, it will be in stone uh, with stone cladding, uh, which is carving. The carvings will be done in India, and these uh, carved pieces will be then put together in Johannesburg and we will see, you know, people talk about Taj Mahal because they only know that. They don't know further. I would go forward and say, you will forget Taj Mahal when you see this uh, beautiful structure coming up uh, in uh, Johannesburg. And why are we doing this? Why are we... In, as I said, we are investing uh, so much into the future of the country. And this temple is a testament of all these struggles that the Indian population has gone through in South Africa and all the contribution which the Indian population has made towards the progress and prosperity of this country. And it is a symbol of Vedic culture, Hindu culture, 
and it is a statement that Vedic culture can love and coexist in a rainbow nation, uh, not uh, shadowing any other culture, but with open arms, welcoming each other, and at the same time, celebrating one's own culture, one's own religion, uh, with a great festivity. So I think this uh, Hindu Mandir, uh, which is coming up, is going to be um, really a marvel in, uh, in the South African skyline. Uh, while we are here, I'll invite all of you in advance. Uh, you know, in a few years' time, we will, uh, by uh, Guru's grace, we will be opening this majestic mandir. And uh, we would like uh, Simpiweji, yourself, and all the viewers as well uh, to come and celebrate uh, this uh, great uh, uh, mandir uh, with all of us. Tanyabaji, indeed, we will come and, and, and visit the place. Hari Pachalji, is there anything that you'd like to say, sir, based on the prospects of VAPS activities? Yeah, look, uh, as Mehul Bhaiji covered a lot of it, basically, it will be a place where you can go into and not just worship, but when you go into this temple, it's, it's a cleaning process. It's for individual. Mm -hmm. You see, all uh, anything to do with God is for your personal thing. It's don't worry about our gurus always says. Don't look at other people's what they are doing and what they are not doing. That's not your duty. Your duty is to look inwards and see how, how impure, impure you are. Instead of pointing fingers at others, point fingers to yourself and say, "Okay, I got this. I got that. I got this." I need to remove this and you need to be selfish there. You, you become selfless to help others. Yes. But when it comes to your own redemption, you've got to be a little bit selfish and look inwards and say, mm. yeah. So this temple that we are being the prospect, the, 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 the whole idea of this uh, temple that's going to be built in Joburg and it's around the world. We got, as you must have read already, we are based, we got over 100 centers in, in USA, North America, UK, every, all these are for people to go in there and to come out of the temple as a clean person. But that only, you only can do that. Somebody else is not going to start scrubbing you. You need to do your own scrubbing, you know. Yes. And that's what God is all about. It's your own karma. You know, right. but stop. Our guru puts very good emphasis. Dehoryam sadhanam mukte na bhoga matra sadhanam. This is one of the shlokas that our Mahan Swami ji gave. He has actually come out with a, a small booklet called Satsang Diksha. It's 315 shlokas. And shloka number two was this, which I'm happily, I have memorized it. <laughs> Uh, in, in terms well of done, uh, Sanskrit, but uh, <laughs> what it means basically simply way is that this body is not to enjoy the worldly affairs. This body is a tool to redeem yourself. And this is what you got to use it for. Don't worry about others. Mm. Worry about yours when it comes to your own moksha. You know, don't look at others, what he's doing, oh, he's doing this and our Man Swamiji says, do not listen to any, any gossips because it's sin. Do not, because God will not embrace you in heaven if you have listened to any, everybody else's stories. It's not a gossip. You got to do, you got to stop all that, look at yourself and focus on that. You know, and then God will, once you stop all that, God will come and embrace you and say, come to my home. You are clean now. Before that, we are very dirty. Nobody will accept you. So these temples will do that, you know. And as Mayul Bhai said, you are all are welcome, Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Ji, our friend also, and um, Simpiwe Ji, you and all everybody, you're welcome. You will get an invite. Come meet our guru as well. 
you'll be enlightened because he himself is beyond the three gunas. He's a gunatit purush, you know. And so meeting him is almost like meeting God, I would say. That's the experience a lot of people have had. I've had, many people have had. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Hare Prasadji. Thank you very much. So, you know, there is this saying that says that cleanliness is next to godliness. So to summarize <laughs> what Hare Prasadji said, that's what he was saying. If your inner part, your spiritual yeah. being is clean, it will just, you know, exactly. it will work with God Almighty. Hare Prasadji, Mehulji, thank you very much. We have come to the end of our program today, but before I close, I will just give you a few seconds. If Mehulji, Hari Pasaji, is there anything that you like to say to those who are listening to you this evening? Hari Pasaji. Our Guru says, in the joy of others lies our own. And this is the motto that we got to live, all live by. You know, in the joy of others. And this is what Pramukh Swamiji, our uh, guru before Mahan Swamiji, lived his life. And so is our current guru, Mahan Swamiji, is living his life. So let's all live in the joy of others. Forget about their shortcomings and whatever it is. Forget about that. Forgive them and forget them. Forget those shortcomings. But look at the good in everything. This is what our our gurus have taught us, if you do that, you will always be happy, happy, and happy. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, yeah. Uh, let me give you one other, one other saying of our guru, Pujya Mahan Swami Maharaj says, uh, what is satsang? What is spirituality? And he says, spirituality is nothing else but our effort to become a better person. That is spirituality. And so in all these spiritual activities which PAPS is uh, carrying out uh, throughout the world and within this country and within each home, each family currently, uh, you know, when we are on an online uh, platform, is to always think about, am I becoming a better person? Is my family becoming a better family? Is my society becoming a better society? And if we are becoming a better person one by one, one by one, we are bettering the entire society. So on this uh, uh, platform, I'd like to thank uh, the host as well as all the viewers uh, and uh, uh, for allowing us this time and uh, leave you with that message that let us all practice uh, true spirituality in which we all look at it ourselves and say, am I becoming a better person? How am I helping those around me? And if each of us do that, uh, South African society will be a better society in the future. Thank you, Jay Swami Narayan. Mehulji, uh, today I have learned a lot from uh, Hari uh, uh, Patelji, Sri Mehul Desaiji. I have really enjoyed this program. And I am happy, you know, because what is happening in BAPS, fulfilling and following uh, the vision of the founding fathers of BAPS, Bhagwan Swami Narayan and also Shastriji Maharaj, who established this institution in 1907. His vision, wherever he is, wherever his spirit is, he is rejoicing because he can see that I left people who are working in hand with the vision of spiritual upliftment. So wherever he is, wherever his soul is, he is rejoicing, I'm 100% sure because you are embracing his vision. And this vision also like Hari Patelji, Mehulji, it will not perish because BAPS is working with you. 
So the betting of kindness and goodness, it is going on and on and on. So to Mayu G, Hari G, Danyavak, to both of you. And I promise nice. whenever we receive that invitation to come and sure. see that Mandir in Johannesburg, I as a Jewe, I promise. <laughs> I promise <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I will. <laughs> I will come, sir. Thank you very much. So we have come to the end of our program this evening. I really enjoyed uh, you. You just, uh, you know, you uh, uplifted our spirit, and we are living in a days where there are lots of, you know, incoming endless troubles in our lives. Corona, you know, crippled us. You know, some homes are destroyed because of this pandemic. But because of having institutions where we can say they are the shelter of any human being, because I understand that BAPS is not only for particular race, but it is for all humankind. So as all families, Definitely. all the youth of today, they having endless problems, families are distracted through Corona. But if we have institutions like BAPS, we know that we can rely on because our spirituality, our problems will be solved and our spirituality will be uplifted. Because all these coming uh, endless, uh, non-stopping problems that are coming to us, they are destroying our inner beings. So we need a place, a place of hope, a place that will give us assurance that all is not lost. So if we have BAPS working along with youths, as Harry Patel G has said, that in BAPS, there is nobody who is saying, I am who I am. People who are battling because of ego. Everybody is hand in hand, youths and adults. There is a mechanism, as Harry Patel G has mentioned, that it starts from there to adults and is done by the youth. So there is a well oil machine that is working perfectly. PS. Thank you very much, Merulji, Ari Prasadji, Danya Thank you. both of you. So we have come to the conclusion of our program this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much to both of you. We have now come to the closing of the to Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Director of Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, um, Sri Piyush Kandelwal. Us for making sure that program runs very smooth this evening. To all our online participants, we'd like to say thank you for taking part on today's program. You are kindly advised to visit ICCR Deben Facebook page for all cultural activities organized by Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center in Deben. Mehulji, Hari Patelji, thank you. We have a wonderful evening. Namaskar.